name is Drew Klawick and I'm a student here at Southern Illinois University in the Automotive Technology Program. Today I will go over the simple alternator, also referred to as the generator, and the heart of the charging system in the vehicle. I'll also go over the purpose, the operation, location, and diagnosis of a failure. The alternator is used on most vehicles with the exception of hybrid and electric vehicles, which use a more complex charging system. While there are many different orientations on the engine the manufacturer can place the alternator, majority of them are driven off the serpentine belt on the front of the engine. Here are several different alternators out of many different vehicles. The purpose of this component is to provide power to the electrical system and maintain a charge on the battery. It also helps provide amperage for the system of the vehicle to keep load off the battery. Here we have an Acura MDX. You can see with the vehicle off, the battery is sitting at roughly 12.6 volts. And once the vehicle is started and the alternator is spinning, you can see the battery voltage is now up to about 14.2. First, I will discuss the rotor. It is an iron core with the copper winding and actually spins inside the housing. It is energized by the brushes that sit in the back of the housing. Mm. When energized, the rotor becomes magnetized. This induces an AC voltage in the other winding, which is the stator. The stator is also a copper core surrounded by windings. This part does not rotate, however, and is the part the AC voltage is induced into. Now we know that vehicles do not use AC voltage, they use DC. This is where the rectifier bridge comes into place. There are diodes that are responsible for converting the voltages from AC to DC. Here I am making a crude graph of the raw output of the alternator. As it is an alternating current, you can see it goes high above zero and low below zero. You can see I am using three different colors because there are three different windings inside the stator. Each color represents the voltage output of one winding. Here is a demonstration of what the rectifier bridge actually does. It has diodes that converts the lower AC voltage into DC voltage that is usable in the vehicle's electronic system. Now for the failures. One could have a bearing seize which would cause a lack of rotation and eventually stress the belt till failure. One could also have the windings fail where they develop an open or a short on the rotor or stator. Another common failure that could occur would be in the rectifier bridge. If it was no longer able to convert the voltage from AC to DC, one would start to see issues with noise entering modules and causing communication errors if too much AC voltage leaks past. Another failure is with the voltage regulator. If this fails, there will be nothing to limit the voltage from going too high or too low and you may not see the charging system working. The bad bearing would be pretty easy to diagnose because the alternator would be making noise or it would seize up. Another simple test that could be performed is to put the DVOM on the battery and see if the voltage rises after starting the vehicle. If there was something wrong in the system, you might not see the voltage rise, as in this clip. Another easy test is to put a picoscope with an amp clamp on the alternator system and load up to the vehicle to see if the amperage continues to rise from the alternator. And lastly for another very simple test. If the alternator is being energized, the rotor will be magnetized when the vehicle is on. So you can take any metal object and stick it to the back of the rotor 
to see if it's magnetized. Thanks for watching my video about alternators. Have a great day.